Dear students, today we'll be looking into the structures which are included in the urinary anatomy and we'll be reviewing all of those things within this cadaver. So first of all, as usual, we need to orient ourselves. This is the superior part, this is the inferior part, this is left and that is right. Now to start with, as our hunt is the structures which are related to the urinary system. So first of all, you can see the kidney left side and the right side. Then we have to see the ureters. And then we can see the urinary bladder. Now, these structures, they are located adherent with the posterior abdominal wall. So let's talk about the structures of the posterior abdominal wall one by one. There you can see the right dome of the diaphragm on the right side and similarly you can see the right the left dome of the diaphragm on the left side after that we have to get ourselves oriented with the muscles so out of those muscles we can see the source major muscle i'm sure everybody can identify and can see this source major muscle on the right side as well as on the left side source minor muscle is not shown in this cadaver then we can see quadratus lumborum muscle on the right side and quadratus lumborum muscle on the left side. Next, we can see iliacus on the left side and iliacus on the right side. Transversus abdominis, I have reflected on the other side. That's why you cannot see it in this cadaver at the moment. After knowing these muscles, now let's come to the midline structures. In the midline, you can see slightly on the left side, that is my abdominal aorta. And we already talked about the moment it passes out of this diaphragm, we call it abdominal aorta. And the vertebral level lies T12 L1. And then it, it reaches to the fourth lumbar vertebrae where you can, you can see yourself, it bifurcates into right and left common iliac arteries. This is L4 level. The structure next to it on the right side, still in the midline, and that is my inferior vena cava, which also goes towards the diaphragm and pierces at T8 level to enter into the right atrium of the heart. And it is formed, inferior vena cava is formed just below to my bifurcation of the aorta and that is the fifth lumbar vertebrae. You can see that. I can show you the right common iliac vein and the left common iliac vein is not shown at the moment. So these two veins, they join at L5 vertebrae level and then they are making inferior vena cava. And on its way, Towards the right atrium of the heart, it receives so many tributaries, and so many of them we'll be looking in upcoming part of our video today. Now, let's focus on abdominal aorta. We have talked about it has different pattern of branches, but right now I can only show you whatsoever is visible in this cadaver. I cannot show you all the theoretical names and the locations that you can check in my previous videos where I have explained separately in those videos. So right now what we can see, the first branch, when this thoracic aorta becomes abdominal aorta and this first branch is the celiac trunk. Celiac trunk we have discussed is an artery of the foregut. And we know that celiac trunk, it bifurcates into three. It primarily divides into three. So you can see that one which is going towards left and this is an organ that is the spleen and there is the pancreas. For the pur purpose of showing to you, I have moved it upward, otherwise it is behind that. So this is splenic artery. Then we can see that there is one tiny artery which has been shown here that is going towards the stomach. We call it left gastric artery and this is my common hepatic artery which is responsible to go towards the liver and the respective area. So this artery was celiac trunk. After the celiac trunk, we have another artery which has been just you can see this hole here and I'm inserting my instrument inside this hole. This is the opening of my superior mesenteric artery. Going down, you can see now I have to reflect it a bit so you can see very clearly what I'm trying to show you at the moment. So you can see here on the right side, this is my right renal artery and similarly on the left side you can see multiple branching pattern of the renal artery and they are not one but I, we can see the multiple so ectopic pattern and but they all are going towards the hilum of the left kidney and this renal artery on the right side is going towards the hilum of the right kidney and you can see it branches off to enter into the hilum of my right kidney further going down 
what we can see on the course of our understanding we can see that someone still in the midline and below at the third lumbar vertebrae level that is my inferior mesenteric artery inferior mesenteric artery is the artery of the hindgut superior mesenteric artery is the artery of the midgut and celiac trunk is the artery of the foregut foregut midgut hindgut after that at the level of the fourth lumbar vertebrae you can see that the two common iliacs i cannot show you here at the moment the gonadal arteries but i can show you these lumbar arteries if you can if you pay attention you can see on the right side these lumbar arteries and they are four in number but as this is unusually more deviated on the left side other than normal and so i cannot show you on the left side but you have seen on the right side two of the lumbar arteries they are originally four in number so now we are done with the arteries and then we know that the abdominal aorta bifurcates at fourth lumbar vertebrae into two common iliac arteries which further divides into external iliac and internal iliac arteries external iliac continues for the lower limb and internal iliac will continue to supply the organs who are located in the pelvic cavity we are not talking about the branching pattern that will be sharing in another video which is upcoming video so after saying so now let's come and talk about the veins we have said already the fifth lumbar vertebrae is the place where my right and left common iliac veins join to form inferior vena cava fifth lumbar vertebrae on its way up it receives various branches and then what is worth mentioning here you can see on the right side there is a gonadal vein there is you are looking at a gonadal vein on the right side and there you are looking at a gonadal vein on the left side so gonadal vein on the right side and gonadal vein on the left side there is a difference the right gonadal vein drains directly into the inferior vena cava but my left gonadal vein it does not go to the inferior vena cava rather it goes and it travels towards this left renal vein which is very long it crosses in front of the aorta and it is been crossed over by superior mesenteric artery so it is been it is sandwiched between my aorta my abdominal aorta and superior mesenteric artery and you can see that the left gonadal vein drains into the left renal vein we are good with this information that this is inferior vena cava and inferior vena cava what i can show you some of its tributaries not all of them so you can see the left renal vein you can see the right renal vein and then you can see the right gonadal vein and you can see the left gonadal vein in case of male we call them testicular veins and in case of females we call them ovarian veins what difference which is worth mentioning and worth seeing is my right gonadal vein is going directly to the inferior vena cava and my left gonadal vein is going to left renal vein not to the inferior vena cava and that is really important and if we have any tumor which grows near to the hilum of the kidney there are fair enough chances that these people might end up with a term called varicocele there are other causes as well but this is this may be one of another factor okay so now we have seen the veins we have seen the arteries and we have seen their visible branches okay so we have talked about the pattern of the arteries in the posterior abdominal wall pattern of the veins in the posterior abdominal wall now let's look at the organs so there you can see the left kidney and the right kidney and each kidney has an upper pole and a lower pole an anterior surface and a posterior surface a middle border and a lateral border and a place called which is located on the middle border that is the hilum of the kidney and this hilum is the place where structures either they are entering the kidney or they are leaving the kidney uh, if we see the organization of these structures which are going towards the hilum of the kidney so we can see that right in front the most anterior structure which is arranged at the hilum of the kidney is renal vein and just behind that we can see all the renal artery and the most posterior structure is the pelvis the renal pelvis which becomes ureter so we have seen this pattern of the organization of the structure within the hilum of the kidney now we have to discuss one more important structures here and that is the lumbar plexus lumbar plexus is formed within the substance and behind this sos major muscle on the right side as well as as the left side so we have to identify so this sos major muscle play a very big role and identifying this sos will help us to determine so many things so i'm not going in detail of the lumbar plexus but right now i can show you some of its major branches 
So when we have reflected this kidney from the right side, so what we can see, what are the structures who are present behind my right kidney? We can see this crust of the diaphragm and then we can see this subcostal nerve and then we can see this L1 nerve. L1, it further divides into iliohypogastric and ilioinguinal nerve. So my subcostal nerve, my L1 nerve, they are coming, emerging from the lateral part of the source major. Going down, there is another nerve which has not been shown in this dissection, but I will show you another one. And But at the bottom, you can see this femoral nerve. So these are the four nerves. What are these four nerves? Subcostal, L1, and then we have lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh, which is going near towards the anterior superior gallic spine, and then this femoral nerve. So these four nerves, don't forget, they are emerging from the lateral border of the source major muscle. Now we have two more nerves which are emerging from the medial border of the source major muscle and out of them I can show you this one that you can see it's placed medially towards my source major muscle and this is the obturator nerve and we know this obturator nerve when it reaches to the thigh it supplies on the medial aspect of the thigh, the medial compartment muscle. There is another nerve which is way behind and for that I have to dig down that is the lumbosacral trunk which, divine, which joins the sacral plexus. After seeing that, now I can show you there is another nerve which emerges from the anterior aspect of my source major muscle. You can see on the right side and I can show you also on the left side. I don't know if you can see this one or not, but this is I'm trying to lift up the genitofemoral nerve and that is emerging through the substance of this source major muscle. And this genitofemoral nerve when it goes down, it bifurcates into a genital branch and a femoral branch. So now we have we have talked about the vessels, we have talked about the nerves, we have talked about the kidney, now we we'll need to talk about the ureter. So you can see that this ureter, it begins at the pelvis, most posterior structure at the hilum of my kidneys, both right and left. And then it descends down in front of my source major muscle. So the part of this ureter, which is present within the, within the abdominal cavity, we call it abdominal part of the ureter. And you can see now it is approaching towards the bifurcation of this common iliac. So this is the second part. And from this bifurcation, and this is the urinary bladder, and it, you can track it down, it goes all the way on the posterior aspect, posterior lateral aspect of this urinary bladder. So that is called the pelvic part. From the bifurcation of my common iliacs to the place where it enters the urinary bladder. Now within the wall of the urinary bladder, it has a course that is called intravesical part or intramural part. So what is worth important in remembering for the ureter, there are so many things, but one of the things which you should not forget, the level where it begins, where the pelvis becomes the ureter, that is the first anatomical constriction site. Second, when it crosses the pelvic brim or bifurcation of the common ilex, that's the second constriction site. Third, when it enters the wall of the urinary bladder. So these are three constriction sites and which are worth remembering. And remember, each part of the ureter has a separate blood supply. There are numerous branches which are supplying in these different areas to, to reach to its destiny, but still this organ is highly susceptible for ischemic changes. So while doing surgeries, we have to be careful for manipulating of this ureter. You can see that this tiny tube. Now we can see in the pelvic cavity, it just in front, this is a urinary bladder. And this cadaver is a female cadaver. So we can all see that, uh, let me try to show it to you. Let me reflect it a bit. So there you can see the uterus. Which part of the uterus? That is the fundus, part of the uterus and you can see the tubes. And then behind that, we can see this is the sigmoid colon and that becomes the rectum.